Now this just feels unholy. Come on, hockey gods, make it happen. Do you see the irony there in me requesting the hockey gods to grant us this wish that stems from the unholiest of minds? And I love that word. It's such a great descriptor and quite a powerful adjective, I feel, because this idea is probably the craziest, most out there idea we have ever talked about when it comes to the free agent signings of 2024. Now, full disclosure, there is a later video coming out about this same player regarding him and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm moving that video to maybe a day or two beyond this one, mostly because this video idea that you're watching right now it kind of takes precedence. It's really, really interesting. So today we are talking about Patrick Kane, former Chicago Blackhawk, former New York Ranger, and a guy who was one of the best American NHL players of all time. He was one of the best players in the league when he was in his heyday. And the funny part is his heyday is still kind of there. You could even debate. I mean, sure, he's been a few years removed from 100 point campaigns in the past, but Patrick Kane, this previous season, had 45 points in 54 games played on a bad Chicago Blackhawks team that lacked Alex Dabrinkit and was under a point per game for the New York Rangers during his short stint over there. Last year, in 21-22, he had 92 points in 78 games played, including 66 assists. This guy has been an over-point-per-game stud for most of the seasons beyond this previous one, and this most previous one lacked a lot of the firepower that many of these other seasons had on the Chicago Blackhawks. We had talked about how significantly Patrick Kane's production reduced this previous year because his number one trigger man, Alex Dabrinkit, was no longer on Chicago. Despite this, though, you could very much say that Kane still has talent and he still has NHL productivity behind his name. It's just a matter of time as to when he's going to sign and where he's going to sign, too. That's the other big question everybody's wondering. As we're going to talk about in the video tomorrow, or in two days, something like that, talking about Austin Matthews and the Maple Leafs, Patrick Kane, essentially, is on his way to a quicker recovery than we had thought possible. He had surgery, he's rebounding, he's feeling good, and when it comes to Kane himself, he had made some comments earlier in the media, pretty much saying that he feels like he is probably in the best shape he's been in in a while. Which, if you think about it, I mean... That's kind of nuts when you acknowledge that Patrick Kane was already a sub-point-per-game player in this most recent season of play, despite playing on a terrible Chicago Blackhawks team. But as to where he could go next, this is where things get even crazier. Kane is 34 years old, and he is an expired UFA, so he just has the reins to choose wherever it is that he wants to go to. And we had ourselves this tweet made by John Dietz that really illuminates where that decision-making process could lead him. Take a look at this initial tweet made by Bleacher Report Open Ice. Kane's recovery appears to be going faster than expected. It has a picture of Kane, and it has a quote from him saying, Yeah, could I come back early? Probably. It's a lot better than I was last year, Patrick Kane says on his recovery from hip surgery. This tweet was quoted by John Dietz, who writes for the Daily Herald. He covers the Blackhawks, the Bears, the Cubs, and a lot of golf. He is a Chicago sports journalist. Take a look at this tweet he made after as to where Kane's next team could be. Watch for Patrick Kane to sign with the Detroit Red Wings. Someone who knows Kane very well said that Patrick Kane told him Kane wanted to follow Debrinket if and when he was able to. Of course, there has to be mutual interest, so we'll see if Detroit extends an olive branch. And with this idea in mind, you kind of have to start thinking, wait a minute. Patrick Kane wants to go where Debrinket is, and Debrinket had signed a somewhat long-term deal with the Detroit Red Wings. Alex Debrinket, if you go over to his contract situation, $7.8 million AAV extension till the end of 2027. Meaning that if Kane really wants to get this done and he wants to play with Debrinket one more time before his career is over, it kind of has to be in Detroit, right? I mean, Dabrinkit on the books till the end of 2027, by the time that year rolls around, Patrick Kane is going to be, what, 38? He's going to be old, and there's going to be a very small window for both of these guys to become free agents and sign at the same team at the same time elsewhere down the line. So, for now, 
based off of this information that Kane would like to play with Debrinket once more, does that not very well mean that Detroit is Patrick Kane's number one destination at the moment? That right there almost feels like treason to even talk about. It feels like Pavel Datsuk on the Chicago Blackhawks. It feels like Zetterberg on the Blackhawks. It's like if you made a trade with Jimmy Howard and Corey Crawford 10 years ago. Things have certainly changed from the time the Red Wings were battling it out with the Hawks in playoff series, and yeah, the Marion Hossa thing all those years ago was pretty wild, but nowadays, the Blackhawks and the Red Wings have both been pretty bad teams in the past few seasons. Not the best. Of course, we know Detroit has been a bit better, but there was that period in 2019, 20-ish, where they were terrible. So, in a way, you could say that window of burning hatred for either team is not really there anymore. And so, when it comes to the idea of Kane heading over to the Wings, while it is so heretic to think about, it doesn't really strike me as one of the more offensive moves that you could make, right? Like, this doesn't feel like prime 100-point Patrick Kane on Detroit feeding passes to, I don't know, Johan Franzen or Damian Brunner. It doesn't really feel like that. It just kind of feels like a guy who wants to play with his buddy. And you already recognize that from the angle of Detroit fans, everybody loved it when Cat came to Detroit and signed the extension. That was a pretty big deal. Nobody was going out there and disagreeing with that. Hey, a good young top goal scorer wants to come to Detroit. He's from here. It's a hometown story that we've been looking forward to the past few years. This is amazing. And for Patrick Kane, well, that's not necessarily the same thing. You could understand the camaraderie here. Kane played some of the best years of his hockey playing career with Debrinket as the trigger man to all his passes, and so, in order to ignite that same fire, bringing Patrick Kane onto Detroit does not sound like the worst idea in the world. And I feel like from the perspective of Blackhawks fans, sure, y'all were kind of sad to lose out on Patrick Kane and Taves left your team, it's a changing era in Chicago. But if you were to have the opportunity to watch Kane and Debrinka tear it up again, sure, on a rival team this time, it's not like many of y'all will say no, I feel. Like, I think a lot of Chicago fans recognize just how good Kane and Debrinka were together, that if they were to ignite that sort of magic in Detroit, it wouldn't be something they would not want to see. Like, sure, it'd be weird, but it's not like this is an undesired situation, right? I don't know. It really depends here on Stevie Y and the Red Wings, because if they themselves have the opportunity to extend a hand, an olive branch, as the tweet said, to Patrick Kane and say, hey, we heard you want to come here, you want to play with Debrinket again, we've got a middle six spot for you and a top spot in the power play, just sign us with a cheap deal and we'll get you on your way. That feels like the best case scenario here. The video we're making later tomorrow talks about Kane and the Maple Leafs signing on a short term very minimal, cheap deal, and seeing if Patrick Kane could revive his career, get himself a bigger role and a bigger point production pace, and as a result, get a higher payday next year when the cap is expected to go up a little bit more. And you could honestly say similar things with this Detroit idea, especially if he wants to go to Detroit specifically, if he himself is saying that he wants to play with Debrinket, if you wanted to brainstorm what a power play unit could look like. Sure, you'd have Larkin there in the middle, you'd have Probably Debrinket on one side and Kane on the other, maybe Cider on the point, or Goss to spare if you want, and then, I don't know, you need another forward there, maybe an Lucas Raymond or something? I don't know, there are a lot of options as to where the Red Wings could go with their power play structure should they bring in a guy with the versatility of Patrick Kane and his playmaking too. Like, that sounds crazy, but of course, it's just a hypothetical idea being tossed around there. Apparently, he wants to come to Detroit, he wants to play with Debrinket, we'll see what happens as free agency goes on, and when Patrick Kane decides to sign, he appears to be recovering faster than we had expected, so maybe that signature comes a little bit sooner than we thought too. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of Patrick Kane heading over to the Detroit Red Wings because he wants to be reunited with Alex Dabrinkit? If you're a Chicago Blackhawks fan, how does this make you feel as well? Does this kind of tickle your nerves a little bit, or does it tickle your funny bone instead? Would you rather see this happen or not happen, especially if it's on a rival team like Detroit? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.